going on True Soldiers? It's Lou Bradford here, aka King Truth and True Soldiers Education. And I want to welcome you to our third principle in our class reaching your in our class reaching your peak through a growth mindset. And I wanna talk about today the third principle grit getting gritty grit entails of two key things intense passion intent being the operative word there intense passion plus perseverance peak performance isn't just about um, one time display of fireworks just something that you do one time as you can see here you don't want that what you want is to have your peak performance as a guiding compass to set you along the path the correct path to achieving and reaching your peak that's what you want so we'll go back start off by going back to our our um, illustration of a mountain climber climbing Mount Everest to reach the peak when you're on that journey you're not just going to sprint up the the mountain it's going to be as you can see here it's going to be uh, obstacles in the way. It's going to be things you have to endure along that path. It's not just going to be a straight shot. You have to persevere through the obstacles. We'll talk about the what grid is and the four psychological as, aspects, assets of grit and in getting into the science of grit. But before we do that, we'll talk about some research that shows the power of grit. There's, many of y'all may know of it, there, there's a school, West Point in New York, where a lot of people try to get into it. It's a military school that people spend years preparing to get into and to get into the school you have to even have to or to even be considered for approval you have to have a congress letter a congressional letter or a senator write a letter of why you should be considered to be approved into West Point but before, after you're approved and before school starts, there's a eight week, there's an eight week assessment and training program called the Beast Barracks. And a surprising amount of people dropped out in, within those eight weeks before they even start school. So military scientists got together and wanted to determine what does those what students entail to help them persevere and sustain the whole course, the whole beast barracks. And they had something called the whole candidate test, the whole candidate score, and that entailed um, evaluating their GPA, SAT, their athletic performance abilities, their leadership qualities, you know, their community involvement, and a lot of things, you know, etc. But that didn't help them measure 
who would sustain through the beast barracks. It, it helped them evaluate who, who would do well during that time, but it didn't, excuse me, it didn't help them see, see who would sustain. Then the founder and, re and researcher of GRIT, Angela Duckworth, by the way, uh, get, her, get her book called GRIT, I believe it was just released this year a few months ago. And you can also see her TED talk on GRIT, that's Angela Duckworth. She was broad man, and she found the solution of evaluating who would sustain through the beast barracks in order to start the school at West Point. And she, she simply evaluated two things: that person's uh, that person's level of interest and their ability to persevere. She would ask them simple questions like, "Do you stick with what you do, or do you kind of go?" from thing to thing, you're impulsive, are you impulsive on the passion end? And then two, on the perseverance end, to name some obstacles or challenges that you endured throughout your life and to give a story on how you overcame and triumphed over those obstacles and challenges and that actually helped measure their grit and who would sustain over the long run. So the four psychological assets, key elements of grit are interest, practice, purpose, and hope. We'll look into, you know, briefly give a synopsis on each one of those. Interest, how, how much do you, what do you find for yourself intrinsically to get out of what you're engaged in, that activity? What do you expect out of it? What do you value in it? What's your you gotta have an interest in what you're doing, not just because you see other people doing it or somebody told you or suggested that you do it, that's why you do it. You gotta have an interest in to it. Two, you wanna practice. Perseverance shows up on the day-to-day -day base as well in the long run. So you want to practice at what you're doing daily and put in the work to gain small, marginal, incremental improvements and progress along the way. Three, your purpose. We looked at the interest, what's in it for you, but you don't want to be driven solely by that. You want to combine that with your purpose. What what are you what are you giving to the world from engaging in this activity? You gotta look at something bigger than yourself. So that would be the extrinsic motivation, your purpose, something bigger than yourself combined with the intrinsic motivation internally what what what's your interest but you keep in mind you don't want to just go out and say well I have an interest and in I can show this I can show that you want to have something bigger than yourself your services and gifts you're providing to the world so if if you look 
when we say intense passion in this sense, we're not talking about necessarily a passion for what's just in it for me, but a passion in the sense of also what's in it for you also as a guiding compass into reaching your peak, tying that passion in to your ultimate concern, your ultimate peak, your ultimate goal. And you're, and you're steady on that path. So, you basically, most of your actions are deriving from a uh, unbinding goal, uh, overall goal. Your all your actions are based on deriving from that a uh, binding goal. So that's so that's kind of like passion in the definition in the standard definition but in between purpose and passion is intense passion tying it in and having something bigger than yourself along with what you value and expect out of it the fourth psychological asset key element to grit that the pargons of a gritty character pargons of gritty people possess is hope. Not hope in the sense that you hope this happens or you hope that happens, but hope in the sense that you know you have the ability to do what it takes to reach that peak. Like for instance, going back to our illustration here, when you when you go up that mountain, you know it's not just going to be an easy shot. There's going to be things, obstacles that get in the way. So your practice on the long term, in the short term goal, your, your, you know, your mundane practices would be day to day conversed with your long term perseverance which would be your hope, knowing that things are going to come in the way of reaching your peak and having hope that you can sustain, knowing that you have the ability to persevere through the challenges and triumph over the obstacles. That leads us into something very important in grit, and that's that effort counts twice. Talent, what you're, what you're born with, and talent, the ability to, the ability to learn something new in a fast manner, in a quick manner. Your, your ability to, to, to embody and ingrain new skills and how fast you can do it, talent, what you're born with, is multiplied by effort. You have to put effort with the talent because talent isn't just enough by itself. Talent times effort equals skill. As you can see in the equation that I have here, you'll see Talent times effort equals skill. But skill alone, you the, what are you going to do with that skill? You have to put it to use. So this is where effort comes in twice. You multiply that skill times effort. When you multiply the skill times effort, that's when you get your achievement, your, your happiness, your satisfaction, 
your fulfillment in that long-term peak goal, that meta, that meta peak, sticking the flag at the top of the, at the peak. You know, I believe Charles Darwin says, it's not the strongest or even the most intelligent that survives. What survives is the one that has the ability to adapt. So you want to adapt to your to your environment, your circumstances, and and have the adaptability, the homeostasis, the the acquire the skill that it takes to get that achievement through utilizing your talent and optimizing it with effort. So for me, for instance, I may not be the strongest person, the smartest person out there. You may be stronger and smarter than me, but I guarantee you one thing, you won't outrun me. You won't outwork me. You won't have the effort over my effort. I can guarantee that. You may match it, but you won't have that. You won't, you won't put in the work that I put in to develop skill. I have that mindset because talent is born, skill is made. You need skill to reach greatness or genius. And I'm gonna run the course. And I won't stop if you're running beside me, unless if I die. So that brings us into our uh, another um, good idea in, in uh, grit. And the, that, that's one of the fastest ways to help develop your grit is by joining a gritty culture. You know, a culture, an environment that has high standards. So you can develop your grit internally by embodying the four psychological assets of grit and then you want to combine that externally by by being around people and pargons that are gritty that have that gritty character so you want the external grit development as well as the internal psychological assets of the grit development in grit, you 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 want to have wise parenting opposed to not so wise parenting. Parent, the word parent, the root definition of it is to bring forth. So you can bring forth by parenting yourself as well as others and your children. And wise parenting that consists of having high standards and also being warm. You want to have high standards and be, be warm. Opposed to having low standards, being permissive, you know, not really having the direction and being warm or, or having high standards and being cold. Cold and authoritative or to yourself cold and ruthless you don't want that and you definitely don't want to be uh, having low standards along with a, a cold authoritative ruthless approach you want to have a high standards and a warm approach to what your warm approach and engagements and what you're doing so that brings us to our our final uh, idea in grit and getting gritty and that's what you can call a hard thing rule you have to have that hard 
thing that you set to reach, to, to achieve. And you have to set it. You have to set it. That's one. Two, you have to practice at it daily. You have to make those small incremental improvements, marginal gains, marginal progress, and work at it daily to persevere in the short term and the long term. And lastly, three, you can't quit in the middle of the season or gear or whatever it is that you're in. You can use the upside of quit and then reevaluate your performance at the end of the season and, and quit and then switch to something else. But you can't quit in the middle of the season. You have to stick with it. So that's our quick synapses and in, in, in the most concise manner that I can put them in. You got your hard thing rule. Wise parenting versus not so wise parenting. You got the fastest way to, to grow your grit through a gritty culture. You have effort counts twice. Yes, talent is important, but effort is important, important. <laughs> and you got your four psychological assets. You know, your, your interest, hope, purpose and practice and that's not the correct order but you know and then um, the research that developed that helped define the power of grit those beast barracks at West Point so true soldier this is our West Point true soldiers education and I hope you're having a great day you can take from this message Develop your gritty character along your journey, month by month, year by year, and developing a gritty character for a lifetime. Have a good one. I salute you.